Welcome to Illivision. Witches in Greek mythology. There are many examples for mysticism, divination, and occult practices in Greek mythology. For goodness sakes, even Pan, that nymph-chasing rogue, had skills. And he was the one who taught Apollo the mantic art, the art of divination or prophecy. Yeah, Apollo, the god of light and prophecy, who was involved in the mysteries and who went to strange places to enhance his skills. In Greek mythology, males were generally depicted with physical strength, while female figures were endowed with intelligence, employing cunning and, in some cases, trickery and magic to survive in a male-dominated landscape. A wonderful and amusing example of this is when the witch Pasiphae, wife of King Minos, mother to Ariadne and the Minotaur, certainly applied some ingenuity in her witchcraft. On learning that her husband, King Minos, was being unfaithful, she bewitched him, causing him to inseminate his lovers with poisonous creatures such as snakes and scorpions, which would, of course, kill them. But Pasiphae alone was immune to the spell. Well, that's one way to keep your man faithful, or rather, keep women away from your man. Anyway, all a bit rich from a woman who slept with a bull. Though, in her defense, she was cursed by the god Poseidon and had little choice in the matter. Still, whilst there was no word for witchcraft in ancient Greece, witchcraft and sorcery were referred to as pharmakia, from which our word pharmacies is derived. And a great deal of magic conducted in Greek mythology involved working with herbs, drugs, and potions. So let's take a look at the three most powerful and intriguing witches in Greek lore, Hecate, Circe, and Medea, and the part that these formidable sorceresses had to play in Greek mythology. In order of age, we start with Hecate. And you can't get much older than Hecate, as she was a titan, an entity that preceded Olympian gods before Zeus defeated the titans in the Titanomachy. She was the goddess of magic, witchcraft, ghosts, and necromancy. Yep, communication with the dead by summoning their spirits. Hecate is depicted carrying two torches, and her name means worker from afar. She is considered as possibly a spectral being, ghost-like in appearance, who at night sent from the world below ours demons and phantoms. She taught witchcraft and sorcery and would stand where two roads crossed each other or on the tombs of the dead. She hung out in Hades and was a companion to Persephone after Persephone's abduction by Hades. Hecate would roam with the souls of the dead, and her approach was accompanied by the howls and whining of dogs. Hecate could bestow mortals with things like wealth, wisdom, victory, good fortune. But all these gifts might at the same time be taken away by her if mortals did not deserve them. But it wasn't all cauldrons and spells for Hecate. She did have time for love, and was said to have had a fling with Apollo, yep, the same god of light and prophecy. Hecate was respected by all the Olympian gods, as is evidenced by the fact that despite Zeus and the Olympians winning the war against the Titans, this ancient Titaness was not only allowed to survive intact, but also to keep her powers. Hesiod states that Zeus honors her above all others, granting her magnificent privileges, and that she is the most honored by the immortal gods, and that Zeus did not oppress her nor take anything away from her. <laughs> like he would dare. Anyway, very respected indeed. Circe. Ah, Circe, the very famous sorceress and enchantress, described by Homer in the Odyssey as a goddess with braided hair, human speech, and possessing strange powers. She was the daughter of Helios, the sun god, and brother to King Aetes, which is important as this is how she is related to Medea, her niece. Circe was a goddess of sorcery whose specializations in magic included transmutation, illusion, and necromancy. Yup, another speaker to the spirits of the dead. 
She is perhaps best known for her skills of transmutation. She is said to have transformed a handsome king who refused to return her love into a woodpecker and in another instance transformed a love rival into the monster that is Scylla, that poor Odysseus battled on his journey back to Ithaca. Yeah, poor Odysseus, who was away for ten long years from his dear wife Penelope. Well, for eight of those ten years, Odysseus was in the arms of other women, Calypso for seven years and Circe for one. Poor Odysseus. (laughs) Sympathy much? No, not not really. It is from the Odyssey that the enchantress Circe is best known for her use of herbs and drugs. Diodorus Siculus states that it is said she devoted herself to devising all kinds of drugs and discovered roots in all manner of natures and potencies such are difficult to credit. Yet, notwithstanding that, She was taught by Hecate about many drugs, and she discovered a far greater number by her own study. He goes on to say that no other was superior to her in the matter of devising uses for drugs. Diodorus goes on to say Circe was skilled in the use of all charms, potions, and spells. She would give men who landed on her island a potion of cheese, honey, barley oats, and wine, into which she had mixed a drug. When they had drunk it, with a touch of her wand, she changed them into different shapes, some into wolves, some pigs, some asses, and some into lions. According to Homer, Odysseus's men were turned into pigs. Odysseus was able to escape her spell thanks to the help of the god Hermes, who provided him with an equally powerful potion that negated its effects. But Odysseus was unable to resist her charms, and once she had turned his men back into human form, he spent a year with her, and indeed they had a son, Telogonus, who later killed him sort of accidentally, (laughs) that for another episode, but there's one heck of a story. And last, but by no means least, we have Medea. Medea is a very complex character in Greek mythology, witch, enchantress, and perhaps the first feminist. Her filicidal revenge is indefensible, but it does provide a powerful portrayal of the female experience in ancient Greek society. She is a woman who is betrayed by her husband, Jason. Her motivations for revenge are complex and rooted in genuine emotional pain. And it can be interpreted as a demand for justice for women who have been wronged. By refusing to let Jason's betrayal go unpunished, Medea challenges the double standards that allow men to act with impunity while holding women to stricter moral standards. In this sense, her actions can be seen as a radical assertion of women's rights to seek redress for the injustices committed against them. While Medea may not align perfectly with modern feminist principles, her portrayal of a strong, complex female protagonist who challenges patriarchal norms and takes control of her destiny has led many to view her narrative through a feminist lens. It had to be mentioned, but here we take a lighter look at Medea, a priestess of Hecate, and focus on her magic. And a formidable sorceress she was. For one, she could summon a pretty cool ride, a golden chariot pulled by dragons. No other witch in Greek mythology comes close in terms of number of mentions of feats of magic. Without Medea, Jason would never have managed to obtain the golden fleece or escape having done so. It was thanks to her magic that he was successful in his quest. Medea prepared a magical ointment that would protect Jason from fire-breathing bulls, used magical herbs to sedate a dragon, used drugs and magic to kill a robot, well, an autonomous named Talos. 
he cut up an old ram, put the pieces in a pot, and with some magical herbs produced a young ram, (laughs) and actually did the same for Jason's father, slit his throat, placed him in a pot, used her magic, and he was revived as a young man. Formidable indeed. And there you have it, the very powerful, the very dark, Medea. The portrayal of witches in Greek mythology not only showcases the potency of magic in its various forms, but also challenges notions that strength and power comes solely from physical might. It emphasizes the importance of intellect and cunning, especially in the face of adversity. Through their stories, these formidable sorceresses offer insights into gender dynamics and help us reflect on the enduring struggle for justice and equality. Hey, check out our YouTube channel at Greek Mythology Illvision, where we bring these stories to life with detailed images. With content derived solely from ancient sources, we take a fresher, deeper look at Greek mythology. More insight, no padding. Entertaining and educational. Looking for more? Access our mobile apps at www.greekmyths.info. Enjoy your mythological journey.